In this tutorial I just want to have a look at a couple of bits and pieces in the timeline to help us to navigate better, to make sure we can be absolutely frame perfect when we do things and just move things around a little bit easier. Now this item over here is your timecode readout. Okay, so it's telling me at the moment that my playhead, my cursor, is at 48 seconds and 21 frames. Also, you'll see that down here it also says 48 seconds and 21 frames. But the difference is I can double click that to go into it and I can actually tell the cursor to go to a specific location. So say I want it to go to precisely 10 seconds. I could just select the 48 and change it to 10 and then 21 and make it 0, 0. But actually if I type 10 and I do point, that means it's going to go to 10 seconds. If I hadn't have added the point, it would have gone to 10 frames. So let's show you. If I do this and I hit enter on my number pad here, you can see it's gone to 10 frames. But if I now double click in here and I do 10 point and hit enter, you'll see that it's gone to 10 seconds. If I double click in here and do one and then I do point point, you'll see that what I'm saying is one minute. So it's no frames, no seconds, one is going to be one minute. Now it's a lot easier if you can get used to typing on your number pad if you've got a number pad on your keyboard rather than having to go to the numbers at the top of your keyboard. You'll find that it's a lot easier to go one point point enter all on the keyboard and save yourself a bit of time. But when I do that, there's the cursor snapped to one second. You can see it says one second here. Also, occasionally you want to create regions where you want to have a look at things or render things, do a RAM preview. And you can click and drag to create a region. So say I wanted to click and drag to create a region here. But say I wanted that region to start at 10 seconds. Well, notice now that this has got a little icon at the beginning that says this is the start and this is the end and this is the length. So if I double click in here and I make that 10 seconds, so 10 point, enter, you'll see that the whole thing's moved across and I've now got a new end time. Or alternatively, I could have specified my end time. So if I double click in there and I say I actually want it to end at 40 seconds, so 40 point, enter, it's now snapped to 40 seconds and I can specify the length. So at the moment it's 23 seconds in a frame. So if I double click in there and say actually I want it to be precisely 20 seconds, enter. Now it's remembered the beginning one, it hasn't remembered the end, note. So I'd need to go to the end one and select that and go 40 point, enter. And now I know from 40 seconds back to 20 seconds, you can see it down here, starts at 20, finishes at 40 and it's 20 seconds long. Okay, so it's a way of being able to navigate and make selections absolutely frame perfect. Also, you might want to draw attention to the fact that you've got your indicator here telling you where you are. And there are options. If you right click on it, you'll see that you've got text color and you can change it from default to custom. When you click on custom, it comes up with a color picker, which I really like. And you can actually say, Do you know, what? I want it to be bright yellow because that's really obvious. I could even make it completely white if I wanted, but I want to make it a colour that's going to really stand out. I think that's awful, so maybe a bright yellow is looking really good. So I've actually gone around just by moving this item, I can even pick a colour. So if I wanted to pick a colour, say, of the actual bins here, so I could click the colour picker and go up and say, right, I want the colour of the bins, and click on that one. And it's given me a different colour, but I might say, do you know what, it's not saturated enough. So I can pull this slider down. You can fiddle around until you get exactly the colour you like and then you can click OK. But to draw attention to it even more, you can right click again and notice the background colour can be changed. So I can go to a different background colour if I feel that that's going to draw attention to it even more. So a dark blue actually draws attention to the time even better than the default. So if I click OK, I've now made sure that I can clearly see where it is. Now, I actually feel that the background colour looks OK with, with default, but I do actually quite like to have my text a little bit more obvious. I think black doesn't draw attention to itself in quite the same way that something like yellow does. So this is a way you can move things around. Obviously, you've got the play functions here. You've even got a loop function. You can turn the loop function on, and when you push play, it's going to loop through the whole section. So I'm actually going to just reduce this section because I don't really need to see it a great deal. Actually, let's move that section. You can actually click on the section and move it. So let's move it here. And then I can loop. And then when I push play, it's going to go through. It's going to loop around.
which is really helpful for when you want to look particularly at transitions actually when you're going over a transition and you want to make sure that the transition works well so you can turn loop on and off we've obviously got recording which is really for audio you've got play from the start play pause and all the other bits and pieces you can go to the beginning and go to the end go forward and backwards one frame which incidentally is just the side arrows on your keyboard so side arrow goes one way side arrow goes the other way that's just going forwards and backwards a frame each time I tap it and if you remember the up arrow zooms into your timeline down arrow zooms out of your timeline the other thing you've got here is actually a a, a rate player so I can play through it's going to play faster and faster and faster And when you let go, it snaps back to zero. Okay, so I'm playing one way, playing the other way. And it snaps back to zero. So it's a way of actually using your mouse to drag backwards and forwards a lot quicker. So it's a really useful little tool. There are keyboard shortcuts to do this, which I'm going to cover in another tutorial. But it's nice to have the, the mouse options if they're options that you use a great deal. In the next tutorial, we're going to have a little look at these headers and just go through the headers so that we understand how they work and what we can do with them. My name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching.